Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on my channel. This is the second time that I filmed this video. The first time I filmed it and I sat down to edit it and the entire video was completely out of focus. I don't know what I did, but I changed one of the settings on my camera and I cannot figure out how to change it back. Um, I keep Googling it and stuff. I'm just maybe not the brightest person when it comes to cameras and technology and things like that. But anyways, this is the second time that I'm sitting down and filming this video and I'm doing it quickly before I go to work. So hopefully this one goes more smoothly and the video is in focus so that I can upload it for you guys. But with that all being said, let's get right into today's video. Initially, when I was picking a topic to discuss for today's video, I had something completely different in mind, but I came across an article or a write-up about this on Reddit. And since I researched it, it was kind of all I could think about and I I wasn't really focusing on the other topic that I picked, so I decided to switch topics and do a video on this. So today we are going to be talking about Seely Castle and the Satanic Mountain. So let's start with Seely Castle. Seely Castle, also known as the Overlook Mansion, was built between the years of 1912 to 1914 for Fred Leering Seely by his son-in-law. He had gifted his son-in-law 10 acres of land, and in return, his son-in-law had built him this big, beautiful castle. Not sure if I had mentioned this already or not, but Seely Castle castle is located in the mountain ranges of Asheville, North Carolina. And the castle itself is a very interesting piece of architecture. The Seely family had some very influential friends, and because of that, there were some very impressive people who have visited and been within the walls of this castle. In fact, all of the lighting in this castle was wired by Thomas Edison himself. And the bedrooms had these lights that when you open the door, the lights would just come on, which obviously isn't that impressive in today's day and age. People get them in cabinets and stuff. But back then, that was something that was completely unheard of. In 1942, Fred Seely passed away and his wife, probably not wanting to live in this huge building by herself, sold the castle to the Asheville Biltmore College, who then decided to change locations. And the castle was left abandoned for a period of time until it was purchased by Jerry Steinberg, who had the intentions of turning the castle into a museum. However, that never ended up happening. Steinberg went on to claim that the castle was haunted by spirits and he ended up writing a book about his time there. And he didn't end up owning the castle for a very long period of time before selling it to a company called the Asheville Christian Ministry. They owned it for a period of time and then they left it abandoned for a period of time and sold it to a businessman by the name of Lorne Wells who ended up living there for another period of time with his family. Let's talk about Jerry Steinberg's claims for a minute. So he claimed that the castle was haunted, which I already said, and inside of the castle, there are all of these secret entrances and secret rooms and things like that, which is very cool and very not unheard of for that time. And there was one room specifically that you could look into. It had a window looking into this room, but there was no entrance to the room. So it was just this big empty room that you could look into from this window, but there was no way to get into it. And he said, sometimes while sitting in the building at night, you could look into that room and you would see dark shadows and hear things coming from that room specifically when there was no possible way that anybody could have been in there. People have also claimed that during the several times that Seely Castle was left vacant, you could see these orbs circling the building at all hours of the day and night. You could also see these dark shadows walking the property of the castle and hear these blood curdling screams coming from the castle as well as laughing and all of these strange noises. Now, obviously there could have been squatters who were staying in the castle because it was abandoned for several periods of time, multiple times, but the most bone chilling and unsettling thing about this castle is that it is said that during the times that the castle was left empty, nobody was living there and it was not owned by anybody. The Seely Castle was used as the elite satanic headquarters. It is said that there would be satanic rituals held there by this cult that was active in Asheville. And some of these rituals that were held in the castle were said to include human sacrifice. Now, yes, this does sound crazy and very out there, but after doing my research, I came across a lot of articles that say that Asheville is actually crawling with occultists and Satanists and that this is a very hot spot for that kind of activity. And the Asheville Mountains are actually referred to as the Satanic Mountains. However, I also believe that this is the Bible Belt, like Asheville, North Carolina is in the Bible Belt of America, I think. So it must be an even amount of both. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to be sharing information with you from an article by a woman by the name of Pamela Shuffert. 
Now, I'm going to link her article down below so that you guys can read it yourself and look into it if you guys are more interested in this, but the article is seven pages long, so I can't go through the entire thing here, but I did pick out some key parts that I thought were interesting and important for today's video, and those are the ones that I'm going to be talking about. So in this article, this woman says the Asheville Mountains are a place where several Christians have been used in blood sacrifices, so murdered. She says that this has been going on for years and she has been doing research on this topic and the area for several years. She goes on to say that the Satanism runs deep in the mountains and goes from being having like all these really high politicians involved in it right down to having everyday people like you and me who are involved in these cults and these rituals that are going on in these mountains. She even says that while she was doing research on this topic, she had two attempts on her own life for her faith in God. She said that one of these attempts took place in Ridgecrest, North Carolina, which is about three and a half hours from Asheville. She says that she was out and there was a rental van waiting for her and inside of this rental van were chains to tie her up, drugs to knock her out, and duct tape to keep her quiet. She said that if these people had successfully captured her, she would have been taken to a famous occultist area in the mountains and she would have been put on a cross and murdered for her disbelief or her disarmament in Satanism. And then she goes on to talk about several other people's experiences with this area and these occultists and this like Satanist cult that she's talking about. She says, and I quote, how can I ever forget the young man who admitted to me he was recruited into Satanism in his elementary school in the Asheville area while in the fifth grade? And by the time he was 19, he had already sacrificed countless victims on the Satanic altar of these mountains. She says that this young man had deep regrets after having to sacrifice his girlfriend for giving information to the police. See, his girlfriend was pregnant and she was forced to sacrifice her baby and obviously she didn't want to and she regretted it a lot. And so she tried to rat out the coven or the cult to the law enforcement in the area. She said that she'd also talked to a young girl whose family were members of what is known as the power people coven. And this group of people were the more influential Satanists in the area. And this included, but was not limited to, doctors, brain surgeons, judges, lawyers, DAs, mayors, and other very influential people in Asheville. Pamela said that through her research, she found that every city in America has something comparable to the power people coven, and these are usually the people who run the cities behind the scenes, which sounds to me to be very comparable to the Illuminati. And again, Seely Castle comes into all of this because she says that this was used as a headquarter for all of these people to meet several times while the building was abandoned or left vacant, which is very odd because it was owned for a period of time by a Christian ministry so that just seems kind of contradicting but anyways to be honest I don't know if there is any truth to anything that this woman is saying so I tried to look up some cases that involved this type of deal in that area on my own and I'm not gonna dive too deeply into any of these cases but I'm just gonna mention it so that there is some back to what she is saying. In April of 2018, Asheville police were called to a park in the area to a very weird and creepy scene. There were all of these children's toys, mostly consisting of rag dolls, but there were also stuffed animals and other things there. And they were set up in like a semicircle and they were lit up with candles and they were surrounding this little toy man playing the saxophone. Now, I don't know if there is any satanic meaning behind any of this, but this was one of the things that came up when I looked it up. And I would say that if I was walking my dog or out and about and I saw that in the early morning hours, I would be very creepy. And then in my research, I found another article and this one took place in Clemens, North Carolina, which I believe is about two hours outside of Asheville, where police were called to a home that there were allegedly satanic rituals taking place within the home. And police would later go on to find several bodies within the house. This house is actually referred to now as the satanic house house of horrors. And I couldn't find too much information on this case, but this was just another headline that caught my attention. And then there was another headline that caught my attention, which I would like to dive more deeply into, but I probably won't because it is true crime. So I'm just gonna really brush the surface of this one. But the headline reads, local officials arrested an alleged satanic ritual case. And this took place in North Carolina as well. And it says a second local democratic party official in North Carolina was arrested in connection with alleged satanic rituals that involved beatings and sexual assault. So that kind of goes along with what 
this woman, Pamela, was saying. Now, like I said, I don't know how much truth there is to this. It is all alleged. I just thought it was very interesting, and I will have the last articles that I talked about linked down below, as well as Pamela's article as well. And if you guys want to do your own research and look into if there is any more kind of like this stuff going on in that area, please let us know so that we can all be on the same page in the comments. That would be really interesting. Before I wrap up this video, I did just want to ask you guys if you would be interested in seeing a video on the dark side of Hollywood. Um, and if you would, if you live in Hollywood and you have any dark stories and you want to send them to me, I'm going to try and go through my emails and get that really under wraps. You can email me there. Um, but your best bet would probably be to contact me on Instagram, which are both linked down below. But guys, that is going to bring us to the end of today's video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below what you'd like to see in my future videos. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.